little array of items that I used for this project. First of all, you're going to need your project template. This is going to be in the description of this video. You can download the PDF file and print it on your home computer or also um, to the library. You could scale it up or down, make it larger or bigger. The bigger you go, the longer it's going to take because we are sewing this by hand. We're going to be sewing this with some simple sewing needles. Um, you're going to want to make sure that you have a needle that also is long enough to pass through the doll's body when you're jointing on the arms. Um, obviously, you're going to need some polyfilling. Um, obviously, a lot more than this, what is shown here. This is just an example. Um, I always have my hemostats and some fabric shears. I like to use a smaller and a larger size. For thread, I'm using a polyester sewing thread. And when I'm jointing on the bear's arms, I'm using this upholstery thread. You can totally just use sewing thread. I just choose to use the upholstery th thread because it's a little bit stronger and it ha it's a little bit more durable. And then you're going to want to have some embroidery floss for the eyes and nose detail here. Um, I also just use some simple acrylic paint to add on a little rosy cheeks. For this project, I ended up using this really cute like cow print. It's almost like a faux fur, a very, very low pile, maybe like a millimeter or two, or maybe not even that much. It's very soft um, and definitely more of a heavier texture. It does have a tiny bit of stretch, so that was really nice. But if you are wanting something a little bit more simple, I would recommend a good old cotton. I always like using Kona cotton. It's very good quality fabric it has a nice weight to it nice stretch and it's really good for doll making then you'll need something to mark your fabric with so i like to use these um friction erase pens or air soluble pens for this project i use a sharpie because it was a little bit thicker um i hate the smell of this one but anyways a thimble you might need a thimble for sewing in case you are sensitive to like poking your finger on the needle that definitely helps and this also helps to having this little beeswax like it's like a thread conditioner and you run the thread through the beeswax and it helps it from not tangling up or creating knots and whatnot um, and then some sewing needles to kind of hold the pattern in place but other than that i think that's pretty much all we'll need so let's go ahead and get started first of all i forgot one thing and that you'll need some buttons to joint the arms it's not necessary but it definitely comes in handy and it makes it a little bit more sturdy all right so first things first you're going to take your fabric and you're going to take out your printed template and you are going to trace your pattern onto one side of your fabric and then you can easily just double up um, i just do it all on one because it's a lot easier to hand sew and it's a, a lot easier to manipulate the fabric and kind of hold it in my hands when it's all one big piece instead of all separate little tiny pieces for this whole project, we are going to be doing a back stitch. Back stitch is nice and strong for hand sewing um, dolls and projects, or just hand sewing in general. It's very sturdy. I like to try to get my stitches between two to two and a half millimeters. The smaller, the better, because it's going to be a lot stronger. And I am just going to go ahead and hand stitch all throughout the template lines, um, beginning to end. I mark the patterns with a little dotted line. That's the part you're obviously going to leave open for stuffing and for turning inside out. Once you are done hand stitching, you just want to go ahead and make a little double knot through one of the stitches on the bottom and I just kind of snip the excess there and then you're, you're good to go. Here I ended up um, just sewing one arm and then cutting it out and doing a little test piece. When I cut it out, I like to check to see how the fabric frays. Um, this one was actually pretty nice, so I didn't really, I wasn't too worried about cutting too close to the seam line, which is great. Be sure to snip around your curves and corners to make sure that your fabric isn't puckering and then you can go ahead and turn your piece inside out. This one turned out very nicely, so that was great and it's looking good so far, so I just continued on. Once you're done sewing your whole project, you can repeat those steps. You snip around your pieces. Um, be sure to, like I said, cut your curves and your corners so the fabric doesn't pucker. 
the legs i always make them so close i'm so sorry but the legs um you just want to be careful that you don't go too close to the line you could even use some fray check along the seam so that it helps stop any fraying from happening because you do have to cut it a little bit closer than i would like to um between the legs there but other than that it's uh pretty much the same thing for all the pieces so you can go ahead and finish that up Once you're done sewing up all your pieces, your curves are snipped, everything's nice and even, you're going to turn everything inside out and you're going to go ahead and stuff it. Little by little is the best way to go because that's going to prevent any lumpiness and unevenness in your stuffing. You're going to see one of my arms in the bear ended up being a little bit lumpier than the other which I was kind of annoyed about but it is what it is. It's definitely best to just take your time with this and make sure everything's nice and smooth. It definitely makes the bear look so much better when you're done, when you really take your time stuffing. So for this particular pattern and attaching the head to the neck, this is just how I do it. If you know how to attach the limbs a different way, then by means, by all means, definitely do what's best and what's easiest for you. Um, for me, I ended up doing a running stitch around the neckline and kind of pulled that tight to seal it up. And then I ended up pushing the neck into the head and I use that same thread that I used to close the neck and I I poked it up to the doll's head and back down to the doll's head and I kind of anchored it down to the body and kind of held it snug with the thread and it it that's not going to be there forever it's almost like a little basting stitch for adding the head to the body this makes it so much easier i don't like using pins for little tiny details like this and or tiny projects like this so using this little anchor thread helps me so much so hopefully that helps you too um like i said it's going to be cut off in the end and it's just there to help hold the head to the body so don't worry about it not looking cute or anything um then all you're going to do is make a ladder stitch around with little tiny stitches from one end to the other all the way around the doll's head to the other end and i actually did that twice to make sure it's extra secure i did it once and it still felt a little bit wobbly so i wanted to make sure it's on there really well and i ended up going around one more time so two times total and then when that was done and my head was nicely sealed to the body i then went back and cut out the stitch that was my little anchor stitch When it comes time to do the ears, I like to make a little tiny, just one stitch going into the bear's ears and then going back down into the bear's ears only through one side and then pulling that tight and that's going to make a nice little gather that kind of gives that cute little ear crease. And then from there, I will attach it to the bear's head and do a ladder stitch all the way around securing the ear to the, to the bear's head. The arms are so small but I just sealed up the little opening with like three or four stitches again a ladder stitch pulled them real tight sunk my thread through the limb so you can't see it and that's basically it. and that's 
how I sealed the arms. And then obviously you're gonna repeat the same step for your other arm. In my other videos, I had sped up how I joined on the doll's arms, so I wanted to leave this one in pretty much real time so you can really see what I'm doing exactly because it's one thing to show it really fast and try to explain it instead of just showing it slowly and then explaining it then. So hopefully I'm going to do a good job explaining this, hopefully. So I start off by using a long piece of upholstery thread or you could just use your regular sewing thread too. Um, I like to double it up for extra strength and you're not going to knot one end or anything. You're just going to thread your needle, make sure your needle is long enough so that it's going to go through the doll's body. You're going to start off by inserting the needle through the inside of the doll's arm a little bit to either side of where that needle point is where you marked where your button is going to go. Um, you're going to pull that through but you're not going to pull it through all the way. You're going to leave a long tail end through that arm. Um, the needle is going to come up on the outside of the doll's arm and you're going to then thread your buttons to go in one way and back down the other. Then you're going to insert the needle from the outside to the inside of the bear's arm and then through the bear's body out to the other side of the bear's body and then you repeat the same steps. You'll go through one side of the arm, thread your button on and then go back down from the outside to the inside of the arm and then back through the body and then I do that two times and I really hope I explained it that well. If I did not, feel free to leave a comment with any questions. I would love to help explain. Perhaps I could make a better video in the future that's specifically just for jointing on limbs. Maybe that would help. Let me know. You're going to do that twice so when you're finishing out you're going to take the thread and it's going to come out of the body just the body and it's going to meet where your tail end of your thread is where you started um, you're not going to thread it back through the arm you're just going to take those two pieces and you're going to take the needle out you can you can get rid of the needle at this point and then you're just going to pull it tight and kind of adjust where 
you want the arms to really sit, um, how tight you want them to be. I like them to be a little snug just in case they loosen up a bit over time. So um, keep pulling both ends. Be sure not to pull so much that you leave, that you lose your tail end. That's why we leave a long tail piece. That definitely helps. Um, so yeah, double knot. I like to double knot it and pull it real tight and then you'll get back your needle. This is, you could definitely just snip off the ends at this point, but I like to re-thread my needle with those two, I think there's like four pieces. Re-thread the needle and then I'm just gonna sink those loose pieces back through the doll so they're kind of hidden. And then you'll snip your ends and that's pretty much it for the jointing part. Finally, we've made it to the end. All I did was two little French knots for the eyes and a simple like three stitch satin stitch for the nose and for the mouth. And that's pretty much it. I just used my embroidery floss for that and I just marked out where I wanted everything to go using some pins. And that's basically it. And like I said before in other videos, you can definitely adjust the face to how you want the bear to look. Not necessarily how I made it here. You can move the eyes around, you can move the mouth around, you can make it not even have a mouth, whatever you desire. That's the fun part. Mm -hmm.